directors and I head up an initiative to try to get you guys to do more internships, which is why I thought it would be really important for me to join in on Melissa's presentation today just to sort of reinforce how important internships are for the alumni, how important they were in our own professional formation, and how important we think they should be for you. To give you a sense, again, of how important this is, I'm actually in Ecuador, um, thousands of miles away from you guys, and I made time in my day of researching and walking around the rain to be here. And by here, I mean a nondescript location in Quito, but also, you know, via technology in the room where you are. Um, given that, Melissa's gonna share a lot of really, really important information about how to apply for internships. Later, I thought I would start by sharing my own experience. Uh, I was at NMU a very long time ago. I graduated 10 years ago. Uh, and while I was at NMU, I majored in public relations. And I thought public relations is fantastic. I love all of my professors. I love the department. I love the classes. And I'm really good at it. This is perfect. I am going to love it. While I was there, I was fortunate enough to get an internship with the Department of Veterans Affairs through an organization called the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. And this is something you guys should be writing down. The Hispanic, I can't see if you're writing down, but I hope you are. Um, the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities is a nonprofit that works to bring opportunities to an intern with the federal government to students. They do focus primarily on people of the Hispanic background such as myself, but they are open to anybody applying. They welcome applications from anybody and do not ever discriminate on the basis of race. What was amazing about that program is that it provided me the opportunity to do an internship in my field, public relations, somewhere outside of Marquette, so I got to see somewhere else to see if I liked it. Uh, my internship was in Albany, New York, and it was a paid internship. I was paid for every single hour that I worked, and I got fully paid travel to go there as well. Not everybody will get an opportunity that's this incredible, but opportunities like this do exist. And they're waiting for people to apply for stuff like this. And they specifically want people that are like people that go to Northern. Why do I say this? Uh, people that go to Northern are resilient. It is cold like crazy up there. And not everybody can stand that. That's a good skill that you already have. It says something about your character. And I think when you're there, you don't realize how much that says about you until you leave and you're able to say, especially if you moved from somewhere else to the UP, how much that says about you and your ability to adapt to change, which is a top skill that employers want. What's another thing that Northern teaches you that's really valuable outside? Technology skills. Again, when I was there, I definitely sort of took for granted the whole, we get a laptop, we have this free uh, wireless network. But when you go intern somewhere, the people that hire you, your bosses, are old and they will be impressed with your ability to do technological things that at NMU are super standard, just part of your normal day. Um, so that's another thing that maybe you're taking for granted or downplaying in your resume or in your cover letter that's gonna be really, really valuable once you leave campus. Um, and the third thing is that they're really looking for skills that Northern is known to be excellent at. GIS skills, for example, writing skills, leadership skills. Those three are huge at NMU, and I really want to highlight how important it is for you guys to realize that being on campus, you either have those skills right now or you have the opportunity to acquire them pretty soon and to be able to put them in your resume. Um, one thing that I thought was key to getting that internship and internships that I had after that was trying to think about the experience that I had from the perspective of somebody else. So like I said, College students have this tendency to downplay or to think like, oh, I was just a waitress, like that everybody's a waitress, that doesn't mean anything. What I really encourage you to think about and to work with career services to do this is to think about, well, I was a waitress, what does that show? That shows that I can talk to people. I am friendly, I'm organized, I'm dependable. Um, if they rehired you at the same place, that shows that you were good at your job because some place where you work one summer was willing to bring you again a second summer um, and that's really really hard to do especially for younger people so I encourage you to reach out to career services uh, and to everybody that works there to really talk about the experiences that you have and see how you can translate those into a resume 
Because your resume is going to be the first thing. You need that resume to be ready for the second you find out about an opportunity, like this random girl is talking to you from Ecuador about a paid internship in the federal government. If you have your resume ready, you could be applying as I'm speaking. If you don't have it, that's going to set you back about a week because it takes about a week to be able to draft and meet and go over and reflect and sort of changes to your resume until it's perfect. And you want your resume to be perfect because they will get thrown out if something is missed out. Hundreds and hundreds of people apply for internships. Um, so point number one is there's great opportunities there. Point number two, you have to be prepared for these great opportunities. Point number three, you have to really take stock of the resources that you have and take advantage of them. So these are things like definitely career services, which I already said, but also the alumni. We're working to be more involved on campus. If you have questions, if you want to know more about my internship, you can definitely reach out to me uh, via Melissa. She has permission um, to do that. If there's another field that you're interested in, there might be another alum willing to talk to you about how he or she got started in that field. And you cannot discount the value of talking to people. One, because you get to learn about their experience without having to do the hard things that they did. But two, because every person that you talk to can give you the names of at least one other person that might be one step closer to what you really, really want. So take advantage of your resources. Things like career services, definitely. Uh, scholarships and opportunities that are for people of your specific background. And there are all kinds. I apply to things that were tailored to people of Hispanic background, because that's my own experience. But there are also opportunities for people from the UP. For example, in Congress, in Washington, D.C., where I live, representatives from Michigan take to take, tend to take only interns from Michigan. So that's an opportunity that you have um, as a Michigander, if that's your case. There are places that tailor specifically to international students. So really think about the things you have as positive um, and think about how far you're willing to go and what kind of internship you want. It's great to be able to intern in Marquette, but maybe you want to try it somewhere else. Maybe you try living in a different part of the country and you have to work with your advisor to plan for that. I super recommend interning, taking a semester or a summer to intern. Luckily for you, NMU offers tons of classes online so you wouldn't even fall behind. Um, well, doing the internship. Um, the reality of the internships is, and we at the Alumni Association talked about this a bunch of times, is that it's nearly impossible to get hired right now without having an internship experience. So I cannot I know I've said the word important about a hundred times in this conversation. I'm gonna say it once again. It's very, very important that your resume by the time you graduate shows that you had an internship experience somewhere. And it's not just a part-time job. It's not being the president of ASNMU. It's not anything else. It has to be an internship where the person potentially hiring you can look at the resume and say, okay, this person is capable of showing up to work nine through five, Monday through Friday, in responding to a supervisor person and is able to do the things that his or her degree says he or she is capable of doing. Um, and you'll do a bunch of them. I did my internship in public relations, figured out I didn't want to do public relations ever again. Uh, I interned at the U.S. Agency for National Development. I interned at an organization that monitors public health threats. And I interned at Mitsubishi International Corporation doing like corporate analysis of risk and geopolitics. And I love that the most. And that led me to a PhD program in political science where I am now. And that led me to Ecuador where I am talking to you. Um, I rushed through a whole bunch of information, but I hope at least parts of this were helpful. I can stay on for a few minutes in case you guys have questions. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, any questions for Fabi while she's here? I kind of want to know where you found, who told you about this great internship, the first one that you had? With the Hispanic so the first great internship that I had, and these people maybe speak about this all the time, I found out because I was at Career Services going to the resume review in preparation for an internship, because I plan, and I was in the waiting room and there was a magazine of like career opportunities and there was an ad for this internship program. <laughs> and nobody else has ever interned there from NMU after me, even though I've tried a million times to get people to apply. This would be a million and one. <laughs> okay, so nobody even told you about it. It was just a chance, chance encounter reading a magazine. 
Nice. And <laughs> that worked out because I was rich. Um, the second internship I got because of people that I met at that internship, mm -hmm. uh, they put me, like I networked until I met somebody at the U.S. Agency for National Development in D.C. At that time I was already living in D.C. and then they opened an opportunity basically, especially for me. Uh, the public health threats internship I got through career services at my graduate school at the time. And then the Mitsubishi internship I got also through career services, but they hired me because I had done the other internship. Mm -hmm. And then that became my job. Nice. So I would say a mix of good effort, right? Please write time, networking, and career services. Okay, that sounds about right. Cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, how do I make the most of the in an internship is the question. Okay, that is a great question. Um, I would say that the number one advice that I give to people when they go into an internship is that in internships, unlike in school, there are a ton of dumb questions and you don't want to be the person that's asking dumb questions. So basically, if you can Google it, do not ask anybody about it because they will form their whole opinion about you based on that question. To give you an example, my First day at USAID, I was running to and it was in Parawak, which is impossible to spell if you've never heard about it. I had no idea what it was, but I kept like taking notes on everything that was bad. And then later when <laughs> we're breaking up the church between Armenia and Azerbaijan. No, hold on. Wait. Uh, okay. Okay. Try that again. So we heard up until if, if you can Google it, don't ask it. <laughs> yes. And the example was um, at USAID in my second internship, third internship. I went to a meeting that was about Nagorno Karabakh. I had never heard about it. I didn't even know how to spell it. But I just took notes on everything they said. Later Googled it found out that it's a territory and dispute between Armenia and Azerbaijan and was able to read a whole report on it. Whereas if I had trusted the meeting to say, excuse me, let's go that would have been the end of the internship for me on day one. Um, so that's really important. Um, two, be professional and prepared. I know that, I think it's ASNMU started a program to lend people interview clothes so that you look nice. That's, I cannot, I cannot uh, just underestimate the importance of dressing not up, but how you see other people dress there. So in my normal life in Washington, D.C., that means wearing navy and black pretty much every single day, no matter where I'm going to, because that's what people do there. Uh, for people that work outdoors, that might be different. Um, the third one, I mean, the thing that will I think the best impression is to do a good job. So try really, really hard to do a good job and people will remember you for that. And then not working, but that could be a whole other skill builder. So I won't go into that. It is a whole other skill builder, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any, any other questions? Could you repeat the name of the organization you got your first internship with? Hispanic? Yep. Uh, that was the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. I think our website is still hacu.net. But there's also um, NMU works with the Washington Center for Internships, which does a similar thing. A similar thing. There's also the, Insti the International Leadership Institute, I think it's called. Um, they do specifically Asian American programs, and for that one, I think you have to be Asian American. Um, and then there's numerous conservative and liberal organizations. Uh, and here I'm talking specifically about DC, which is the geographic area I know the most. Um, there are very, very many um, conservative and liberal associations that provide both paid and unpaid internships. For example, in the liberal side, the Center for American Progress has a number of paid internships 
uh, open spring, summer, and fall. Obviously, the summer is the most competitive, uh, but spring and fall are a little bit more doable. Um, and then the international, you know, the Institute for Humane Studies is a more conservative organization affiliated with George Mason University. They also offer some internships that I believe are paid. All right. There was one more question back here, wasn't there? Yeah. Three skills you need writing, leadership, and wellness. The third one. Did you catch that, Fabi? You said that there were three skills needed. One was technology, right, leadership, mm -hmm. anything else? And technology skills technology. Oh. that I think you're able to get. Um, and then and you can get up what are called hard skills like a GIS knowledge, uh, state or SPSS knowledge, any kind of programming. Cool. Anybody else? I see it's quarter after. I don't want to take you. Take up too okay. Long. Anyone else? Um, any think questions do come up later. We are available. Cool. Um, I might point them in your LinkedIn direction, if that sounds okay. Um, sure. Otherwise, I'll, I, that's perfect. I can share that too. So, that's perfect. Okay. All right. Either one. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Have a good presentation. Bye. Yeah, Bye.